past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, whenever we last left off, with this series, we had Izuki, Izuku, Katsuki, and Katsuki, that was a mouthful, all of them are now trying to get accustomed to their new lives. Surprise, surprise, it was not easy. And this is what we do currently have, five months later. Now, everyone is still training for UA. And things have been getting a bit strange. They've been able to work out certain schedules so as to at least be able to avoid each other sometimes. However, with picking a schedule, there is always something that is unpredicted. And this is what we do have today. Instead of Katsuki and Izuki heading to the gym as they usually would, where Bakugo and Midoriya would usually head out for a run and do their cardio workouts, Izuki, this is her day off. Or Katsuki, it's her day to work out at the gym and vice versa. It's Bokka's day off while Midoriya is heading to the gym. Now, they did not realize this until after school, where Midoriya, he was still wearing workout clothes over his school uniform, talking about how he was going to head that way. And Katsuki, she got a bit angry and surprised asking exactly what the hell is going on. Where, Izuki was actually somewhat, well, shocked herself. She thought that today was her day to work out. Her then having to tell Katsuki that she's very sorry. And Bakugo, he did tell Midori that he can just switch, can't he? Um, uh, I mean, if we need to, yeah. But no, we can't. Izuki goes on stating, talking about how this is her only day off, or, well, that she has this week. The rest of the week, she's going to be working on her quirk training. Ah, <sighs> damn it. You're right. But what about me? I have the next few days on. Hmm. Well, I mean, what's that one place? Shit. Do you guys have it in this reality? Hmm? Have what? Well, there was a gym by our house. It was more of a hardcore muscle-bound gym. They permit you to use your quirks there. Huh? Really? I mean, yeah, as long as your quirks aren't too destructive. Hmm. Well, come on, Midoriya, you used your quirk there once. Yeah, and I received a lifetime ban. <laughs> Still was pretty funny though, right? <laughs> ah, it was, yeah, but still. I don't think they'll allow me to use my quirk there. Hmm. So, what are we doing here then? Katsuki says. Talking about how they're wasting time. This being where Izuki quite simply just says that it seems like they're going to have to just stick to the schedule. Her and Bakugo turning and walking away. Midori and Katsuki left standing there for a second. Uh, so, do you just want to go? Hm, fine. <sighs> You're lucky that you're basically just her. Hmm? Oh, right. The female me. Hmm, basically. 
her not wanting to admit that this is just a whole new scenario. Now, her and Midoriya do head to the gym. After Midoriya does take off his school jacket and then unbutton his shirt to reveal a tank top underneath, Midoriya does run into the locker room real quick. Him, then at least, slipping off his dress pants and revealing the shorts that he does have to work out in. Afterwards, he would put his stuff in a locker and lock the, well, locker. Now, after that is said and done, he would come back outside. And he would quickly look around, trying to find where Katsuki is. Now, with that being said, Midori does walk around the gym for a second. And he does actually find Katsuki. Her somewhat just standing there and waiting to try and hop onto one of the machines. As some guy is currently bench pressing a bunch of weight. And he is trying to show off and be impressive. Right in front of a pretty girl. Now, Midori does see that. As the guy's friend does come walking up, and he does try and show off as well. These two muscle-bound idiots trying to basically get her number. And Midori can see it. She is about two seconds from throwing an explosion directly in both their faces. And Midori, he actually does decide to do something. As he walks up. Now, instead of Midori throwing hands and making a scene, he actually does just bring his hand up onto Katsuki's shoulder putting his arm around her, and basically saying, Hey, babe, hmm? what the hell are you doing? Shh, just play along. Come on, you shouldn't be disturbing these guys. Midoriya basically pulling her away and out of the situation, as those two do look at each other. And they decide that this place, well, it just got pretty weird. So, they would immediately leave the area, heading over to a different side of the gym. To which, as soon as Midori does actually look over his shoulder and see the two go around the corner, he immediately brings his hand off of her shoulder. <sighs> Sorry about that. It's, why... you... <sighs> Thank you. Hmm? Uh... Don't worry about it. It's just... Those guys were... Creepy. <laughs> yeah, they were. You don't have any idea how much me and Izuki used to deal with that here. Hmm? Really? Yeah. Why do you guys deal with that there? Or here, my bad. Well... Most of the gyms nearby and surrounding us, they're kind of... They kind of banned both, almost both of us. Hmm? What are you talking about? Well, Izuki has a knack for lashing out with her quirk. Huh? This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Yeah. She kind of asked me to keep it a secret from both of you. But that's the reason that we couldn't go to her then naming off four to five different places. Talking about how Izuki isn't even allowed to show her face around there. Wow. Go her, I guess. But, yeah, th thank you. Hmm? Why are you getting all shy? I'm not. It's, <sighs> it's very complicated. Now, with that, we actually do have over back at the apartments. Where Bakugo, he is just sitting back in his apartment. And he is actually just reading a book. Think about how this entire thing is weird. Hell. A day off. Seems pretty interesting. 
him flipping through his romance novel and seeing something on the page. Hmm? What the hell? Oh, come on. Seriously? How the hell did she tear this page? She doesn't even take care of her books right. Him closing the book and getting a bit annoyed. Him setting the book down and at least trying to get up. This being where Bakugo does actually begin to start doing push-ups. Now, meanwhile over with Izuki. She herself is looking online. And trying to find a place that she can go to to lift heavy objects. Seeing if anyone would need anything moved in their area. Now, she would want to do this as a form to make money. And not only that, but it does help her quirk. She usually would do it for free, but people always feel that they're obligated to give her money. So she's kind of forced to take it. Now, with that being said, we do cut back over to the gym. Roughly about, let's say, almost an hour later. Where Midoriya, he is done with his workout. And so is Katsuki. Or Katsuki. And she is finally at least a bit more comfortable. Her talking with Midoriya and him and her at least getting a good laugh out of the situation. Her talking about how those idiots earlier were really, really annoying. How she was about to actually throw an explosion in their face if they kept talking the way they were. Treating her as if she was some sensitive girl. <laughs> oh, please. I know enough about you, I'm pretty sure, to understand that you're not. Hmm? Oh, really? Try me. Hmm. Fine. Whenever me and Bakugo were kids, right? Mm-hmm. You remember the fence that led out to the pond? Oh, wow. Okay, continue. Bakugo fell off the log, and I tried reaching out. I didn't have my quirk at the time, but hey. Thought it would work. I ended up falling in. <laughs> wow, okay. That's completely different from what me and Izuki did. Hmm? What'd you guys do? Well, I did fall off the log. But afterwards, she more or less pulled me up. Hmm? Wait, you didn't land in the water? Y yeah, I didn't. She's more or less been there to cover my back for as long as I can remember. It's one of the reasons why we're best friends, you know? Midoriya, watching as Katsuki, she seems to have gotten shy. Hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, man. Which means that... Izuki is more like Bakugo here. And she's shy. Okay, this place just got a whole lot more interesting. Hmm. Alright. Uh, well, I'm done here for the day. What about you? Hmm. Yeah, I'm starting to... Well, you know, stink. Yeah, okay. Let me go change and we can leave. Hmm. Alright. That being where Midoriya, he at least does decide to go and get his back. Whenever he does walk into the locker room, you do have those muscle-bound idiots. Midoriya getting to his locker and opening it up. To find that it's not there anymore. Hmm? What the hell? Where's my... Midoriya turning to see those guys. Them holding up his bag and asking if this is it. Hmm? What are you two doing? Hmm. You ruined her chances with that girl earlier. Yeah, she's not interested in you idiots. Hmm. Well, you didn't know that. 
Oh, trust me, I know a lot more about her than you think. Hmm. We're going to teach you a lesson, then. Does no mean nothing to you idiots? Hmm. Don't call us idiots. Both these two guys rushing forwards. As Midoriya, he does one simple thing. He simply does just bring his hands up. And immediately, Blast flames through both of his arms. As soon as he does, they both hit the lockers. And go spiraling forwards and flying down the row. Midoriya watching those two guys immediately turn on a dime. And try to at least block their bodies. As soon as it does happen, we do actually cut to outside, where the fire alarm has gone off. And Katsuki, she actually is looking back inside the gym, looking to see that flames are currently pouring out of one side of the locker room. Hmm. Oh crap. Her deciding to run back in. As Midoriya, he is currently running through the lockers and blasting flames at these two guys. Midoriya dodged into his right and narrowly avoiding a punch that busts through a locker. As he does turn and immediately bring his hand to a guy's face, telling him that he can produce flames up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, and then asking him exactly how much does he think it takes to melt a human skull. Uh, I don't know. Of course you don't. Let me give you a brief estimate. Katsuki walking to the locker room. As Midoriya goes on stating that it's like a bit, it's a bit like this. Midoriya turning his hand blue for one second, it being coated in fire. Talking about how this is the hottest flame he can produce, and he doesn't actually know how hot it is, but he's curious. The guy is slowly backing away, talking about how he can just feel that thing burning his eyebrows. Hmm. Good. Now I expect you to... This being where one guy does come up behind Midoriya. Katsuki is shouting to Midoriya to turn the hell around. As she blasts him with her explosions. Now. As soon as she does actually come in, that guy looks up. Hearing that loud sound. Katsuki blasting in and bursting off her explosions. Midoriya turning around and throwing his elbow directly into the guy's face. As Katsuki, she does immediately fly by Midoriya, bringing up her left hand and throwing an explosion in that guy's face, telling him just to leave her the hell alone. Now, with that, that guy goes barreling backwards and onto the ground, while his friend runs over to try and help him. Katsuki immediately grabbing Midoriya by his hand and pulling him. Now, with that, Midoriya was able to pick up his back, and the two do leave, running out of the gym as firefighters and every other, well, safety, not safety, firefighters, policemen, and pro heroes are on scene. Now, the moment that people see these two run out, pro heroes immediately look at them. And they turn and run off. Now, with that being said, eventually, let's say 20 minutes later, the two are actually at a park. And they're both very tired. <sighs> nice job. Do you think that we got banned there too? Hmm? Huh. Not surprising. Then again, at least the others can go. Mm, you're probably right. But even then, once they find those two idiots, all the damage in there, the fire... Well, crap. It was fun while it lasted. Mm, you're right about that. Ugh, but anyways, let's get going. <laughs> yeah, sure thing. Izuku. Hmm? You say my... What'd you say? Uh, nothing. Deku. Hmm? Alright. The two proceeding to walk away. As we do actually have somebody nearby. 
them sitting down on a park bench and just watching these two walk away. Hmm. Them, at least, looking up and thinking for a minute. This scenario is already quite interesting. Hmm. So this is what would happen. I'm curious to see how it plays out more. But then again, let's add a little bit more to the fun. He says, bringing up his hands, or his hand, and snapping his fingers. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. I will catch you guys in the next part.